Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Unleashed Recompiled. This is the unofficial PC port of the Xbox 360 version of Sonic Unleashed. It's created with static recompilation. This setup process is going to be fairly easy. The one thing that's going to be difficult for many people is acquiring the ROMs. And that is something that I'm going to upfront say that is not something I could provide to you. I can only give you hints as to what to look out for, though. The EU version is probably the version you're probably after. Now, moving on from that, I'll have the GitHub linked down below. And this is what we're going to be looking at here, the Unleashed Recompiled. But what we'll do is simply go down until we find download the latest releases. As you can see, it was also up here. There's a version for this for Windows and for Linux. And I'm going to go through both of these setups in this video. But first, we're going to start with Windows. All we'll do is come down here and download the Unleashed Recompile. We'll save it to our desktop. With it on our desktop, I'll just go ahead and extract it. Extract it to its own folder. I have the game files right here. So convenience, I'll just put them together. Let's clean up and get rid of the archive. This is a fairly straightforward process. It's going to guide you as to what you need to do. Go ahead and launch it. The first thing it's going to do is ask you for your language. Pick your language, click next. We'll click next. Here's where we'll add our game. I'll go ahead and add a folder. Now I'll go ahead and select my folder. And we have the game checked off, letting us know that it's there. Now, one important thing I want to mention here is that if you end up with an ISO file, you may want to follow my guide into turning it into an X ISO. Now that guide is for the original Xbox. However, it's going to be very helpful here because we'll be able to extract the contents of an ISO file into a folder, which this game will require. I'll have that linked on the box up top and below. Next, I'm going to add the update file. I'm going to look for a file here. This would be the file. Now I have my game and my update file. We'll continue hitting next. And now it's asking for DLC files. Now this is not required, but if you have them, this is where you're going to add them. The way I have them in the folder, I'm going to have to add them each file at a time. As you can see, now the file is showing that it is active. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of them and then get back to you when I'm done. So now that all of my files are added, we'll go ahead and click next. It's letting us know how much space we need and how much is available. This is fine for me, so I'll go ahead and click next. It's doing everything it needs to do in the background with no input from you other than the required files. Now that it's done, we can go ahead and click next and it's going to launch the game. With the controller plugged in, we can head to the options menu. Within the options menu, we have the ability to change our video output now. So here you can scale it to however you like. If you change the resolution scale, it lets you know on the right hand side what resolution you're going for. I'm going to keep it at 100% for 1440p on my system. Change the aspect ratio, 16.9.4.3 or the original 4.3. I'll keep it 16.9. Full screen on startup. Disable VSync since I have a variable refresh rate monitor. Here we can change the FPS. And I have a 240 hertz monitor, so this is perfect. Just a brightness. Anti-aliasing. It should go without saying, but these settings are very dependent on your hardware. I'm very confident that my hardware can handle all of these settings maxed out. You may want to tinker with these if you have a uh, mid range to low end hardware. Change our shadow resolution to double that for nice, sharp, crisp shadows. As described here, we can apply anti aliasing to alpha transparent textures. It looks better if you keep it on. And this is the global illumination texture filtering. You can choose between by cubic or by linear. I'll keep it at by cubic. And here you have the ability to either keep the original motion blur. Use the enhanced one or just turn it off completely. I'll take a look at the enhanced version here. We have the option here to change the color correction. Uh, this one will give you, like it says on the right hand side, the warm tint 
from the Xbox version of the game. Or if you want the cooler tint, you just turn it off. Alternatively, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't be able to use reshade with this as well. So you may want to change your own color profile of the game. Then we have the cutscene aspect ratio. So as it says on the right hand side, the original cutscenes are locked to 16 by 9. The unlocked aspect ratio here does note that it will introduce certain oddities. So I guess go ahead and try this if you're on a monitor wider than 16 by 9. But for now, I'm going to keep it at original. That's the last option here that we have to change for our video settings. You can obviously change your audio settings and your inputs. And along with just the basic game controls. All right, so here on my Linux desktop, I went ahead and downloaded the recompile. I went ahead and got the flatback version. From here, I extracted it, received this file. I'll just simply double click. Install from local bundle. At this point, it's going to ask you for a password prompt. It showed mine off screen. It's installed. We'll go ahead and launch it. I'll go ahead and select English and hit next. I'll go ahead and add the folder. From here, I'm going to locate my game and add the folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the update. Now we've both added, we just hit next. And now as for the DLC, I have this all in the folder. So go ahead and add a folder. When done, we're going to hit next. It's going to let you know how much space is required and how much you have available. We'll go ahead and click next so that it can do its thing. The installation is complete and it took under a minute. We'll go ahead and click next. And now the game launches. Here we go. Another amazing feature of this out version of this game is that it actually has mod support. The game includes a mod loader compatible with the Hedge Mod Manager. It lets us know here on the GitHub. As an option, users looking for Linux support should try the development version of Hedge Mod Manager 8, which should work out of the box on platforms such as the Steam Deck. It also lets us know here that the mod format uses the same standard as the ones used by Sonic Generations mods. Modded files for the Xbox 360 version of the game are compatible with Unleashed Recompiled. However, some mods may have targeted a version of the game that doesn't contain the title update. So those may have issues and require updates from their authors in order to work with the recompilation. And finally, mods that replace the game's executable file, the default .xex, or shaders are not supported. Hope you guys found this guide helpful playing Sonic Unleashed natively. If you did, please give the video a like so that YouTube can share this to others. Subscribe if you want more guides like this. Support links will be in the box below. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.